Kuktian Group Company Limited. Remarkable organisms that created the world. Many must already be wondering, how did organisms create the world? This CD will provide you with not only the answer, but knowledge of the benefits and consequences from utilizing such microorganisms in agriculture, along with proper techniques and uses. One. The first known life forms to appear on Earth were microorganisms. Scientific evidence proves that the first living creatures to appear on Earth were microorganisms known as cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. Fossilized bacteria have been found in undersea rock deposits, which geologists estimate are about 3.5 billion years old and still existing to this day. The Earth's extremely hot temperatures during prehistoric times contained no oxygen and was predominantly carbon dioxide. However, living microorganisms such as cyanobacteria have a high ability to adapt and were able to photosynthesize, meaning they produced their own food while surviving by adapting to all of the Earth's environments for the past three and a half billion years. Moreover, the microbial cells of cyanobacteria contain chlorophyll for photosynthetic production, with oxygen being the end product that was released into the atmosphere, transforming the global environment to support the growth of other species. What are microorganisms? Many may still not fully understand what microorganisms actually are. Microorganisms are microscopic life forms that cannot be seen with the naked eye. A special illuminated microscope is required to make it possible to view the first microbial species to inhabit the Earth. Now such microorganisms are commonly found in nature, whether in the air, water, or ground. Microorganisms can be grouped into four categories, based on size and shape. 1. The virus, which is the smallest microbe that can only be seen through an electron microscope at 10,000 times magnification. 2. Bacteria, which are larger than the virus and are visible through a normal light emitting microscope being magnified by just 400 times. 3. Even larger than bacteria are fungi, which can be divided into two categories known as yeast, which come in round forms and mold, which come in linear forms. Fungi are visible to the bare eye. And four, single-celled algae, which are the only microorganisms that can independently synthesize their own light due to photosynthetic pigments in their cells. This particular group is considered as the production base of the food chain, with humans at the top. Three, types of microorganisms in the natural world. In nature, there are three basic types of microorganisms. They are 1. The productive group, which benefits the natural ecology. The first group consists of bacteria that are beneficial to plants, humans, and animals comprising about 10% of all microorganisms. 2. Secondly, the microbial bacteria group is to blame for transmitting diseases to plants, humans, and animals they make up about 10% of all microorganisms. Three, and thirdly, there is the neutral microbial group which helps sustain other groups of bacteria when they are lacking. This group will support that particular group of microorganism. 80% of all microorganisms consist of this type. Therefore, by increasing the volume of such microorganisms in nature, 
we can spur procreation of their beneficial counterparts to offset the counterbalance of harmful bacteria. The result is a balanced environment for plants and animals to coexist happily and disease-free. Due to the aforementioned reason, Fuktian Group Company Limited had initiated a study that brought together Fuktian Group scholars to research soil rejuvenation and treatment methods for crops through microorganisms that are naturally present but also beneficial to humans and plants to help drive production in the agricultural and industrial sectors. The main focus was on organic cultivation in agriculture while also reducing the use of chemical fertilizers. Those in the field of animal husbandry were taught to rely on natural rearing methods while cutting down on the use of artificial chemicals on livestock. Meanwhile, those focused on the industrial sector prioritized the treatment of wastewater prior to discharge into natural waterways to ultimately reduce the amount of pollution in natural water sources. From the research conducted by Fuktian Group Company Limited emerged four groups of products based on the use of beneficial microorganisms. They were 1. Products for agricultural use 2. Products for aquatic farming 3. Products for raising livestock and 4. Products for wastewater treatment plants and homes. 4. Products for agricultural use. Have you ever wondered why forests are naturally lush and filled with large healthy trees? Thriving much more than our healthiest vegetables grown in our own gardens and farms. Even though the forest is not constantly watered, tilled and fertilized. The integrity of the trees in the forest owe it all to one thing, the soil. Present in well-balanced forest soil are the following key elements. 1. Inorganic matter, which is part of the chemical decomposition of minerals and stone, making up most of the nutrients taken in by plants. 2. Organic matter is the result of decaying plants and decomposing dead trees that turn into nutrients Nutrients and secondary nutrients that the plants absorb help retain water in the soil and serve as food for microorganisms. 3. Water retained in the soil helps form space between the particles, contributing to the process of dissolving the nutrients into the soil. 4. Air is collected in the soil between the spaces formed by the particles and water, leading to a concentration of oxygen that helps sustain plant cell respiration, while the oxygen and nitrogen in the soil benefits the microorganisms. 5. The microorganisms have the duty of degrading the organic elements from plants and animals, along with breaking down the inorganic minerals within the soil into minerals that are easier for the plant to absorb. Therefore, soil that is suitable for cultivation must always contain balanced proportions of the five elements. If there is a deficiency of any one of them, it affects the growth of plants. But at present, we tend to focus on chemical fertilizers alone when treating soil in our gardens and farms, which over time takes its toll on the quality of the soil, causing higher pH and alkaline levels. The once plentiful microorganisms that degrade organic compounds along with waste and biodegradable inorganic matter into useful minerals for the soil, and thus plants, all die from the obstruction of oxygen flowing through the soil. Particularly, it is the mineral fragments in the chemical composition of the soil which prevent the air from flowing. Moreover, when water or rain fall onto the soil, it becomes firmly packed, and plant roots cannot absorb food. As a result, stunted plant growth. When the group of useful microorganisms from the productive group die, 
the microbial bacteria from the harmful group thrive. The microbes in the harmful group are to blame as they are transmitters of bacteria to crops that can cause harmful diseases. This type of bacteria causes decay in useful microorganisms that transform nitrate in the soil into nitrite. After two or three years, the nitrite residue becomes nitrous, leading to corrosion. After extensive accumulation, it reaches the saturation point and turns into hydrogen sulfide. And it is this group of microorganisms that are responsible for causing pathogenic fungi in plants, including the mold known as Phytophthora, which causes rotting in para rubber. Curvularia mold takes the shine off rice seeds, whereas Acetylargocytemia causes disease in sugarcane. And of these, Corlacortrium causes a form of anthrax in mangoes to begin with. Useful microorganisms in the productive group can be divided into eight types according to their benefits to various crops. 1. Productive microorganisms that help transform nitrogen, N, instead of urea. This group of microorganisms takes in nitrogen from the air, which comprises 78%, and converts it into nitrate, which plants can use. Bacteria in this group consist of Azotobacter, Rhizobium, and Nitrobacter, for example. 2. Microorganisms that dissolve phosphate, P, in soil and minerals. This group of microorganisms converts phosphorus in the soil, usually found in a form that the plant cannot utilize, into useful bacteria and fungi, such as Bacillus megatarium and those in the Penicillium group. 3. Microorganisms that are capable of dissolving potassium, K, in soil and minerals. This group of microorganisms converts potassium in the soil, which is most often found in a form that the plant cannot absorb, into a more useful one, such as Bacillus cyculant bacteria and Mucaw fungi, for instance. 4. Microorganisms that serve as secondary plant nutrients. When microorganisms in this group die, they are consumed by other microbials in the decomposition stage and in the process release sulfur, calcium, and magnesium, which act as a reserve of nutrients for plants. Some examples include yeast, Saccharomyces, Siri VCE, and Candida to begin with. 5. Microorganisms that produce hormones. This group of microorganisms stimulate plant growth substances such as oxygen, gibberellin, and cytokinins to promote a rapid growth rate. These include bacteria known as Burcoderia, Capersia, and Pseudomonas. 6. Microorganisms that serve as decomposers. This group of microorganisms helps accelerate microbial degradation of plant and animal remains in the soil, which then become food for plants at a faster rate, such as with Cellulomonas bacteria and Aspergillus molds. 7. Microorganisms that ward off and destroy plant diseases and insects. This group of microorganisms helps in preventing and inhibiting the growth of fungi and bacteria that cause disease in plants, such as bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis and fungus Trichoderma parsianum, for instance. 8. Microorganisms that accelerate coloration in vegetables. This group of microorganisms produces color-enhancing nutrients called keratinoids, which spur yellow and orange pigments, and astaxanthin, which makes plants give off a red pigment. As crops such as vegetables receive more exposure to the useful nutrients, they gain color, making them more beautiful and appetizing, such as with yeasts, Paphia rhodozyma, and rhodoterula, for instance. 
The microorganisms from the eight groups are present in the concentrated Dr. Plant formula. If used on the farm, the benefits are as follows. 1. It adds essential nutrients to improve the quality of depleted soil. 2. It adds nutrients needed for healthy plant growth. 3. It neutralizes the soil, causing incoherent grains and, in result, facilitating the roots in absorbing food. 4. It adds sweet scents, colors, and shine to crops. 5. It helps increase resistance to plant diseases and insects. 6. It is not harmful to the user and environmentally friendly. The mixing process for the organic solution is as follows. Begin preparing the organic solution by pouring 200 cc of the highly concentrated formula into a 200 liter tank and add 150 liters of water. Then stir the water together with the Dr. Plant formula containing the productive microorganisms before adding another 200 cc and stirring it together. After that, fill the rest of the tank with more water and stir again. Allow the mixture to settle for 15 to 20 minutes before spraying. For a 100-fold increase of bacteria in the microbial fermentation process, leave it for 5 to 24 hours. To spur rapid bacteria growth, aerate the container for 4 to 6 hours before applying it to the land plot. Directions on how to apply the microbial formula after fermentation are as follows. Para rubber. 1. In the initial stage, spray the liquid mixture around the base of the tree every 20 days for 2 months. 2. After that, spray every 3 to 4 months. 3. One liter of the concoction can be used on about 5 to 7 rye. Palm. 1. In the initial stage, it is recommended that the liquid mixture be sprayed around the base of the tree every 20 days for 2 months. 2. After that, spray every 3 to 4 months. 3. One liter of the concoction can be used on about 10 to 14 rye. Fruit. 1. In the initial stage, spray the liquid mixture around the base of the tree every 20 days for 2 months. After that, spray every 2 to 3 months. 3. Once new leaves form and fruit is produced, increase the ratio by 2 times. Vegetables and Farm Crops 1. In the initial stage, Spray the liquid mixture over the vegetables every 10 days. 2. For accelerated growth, double the amount used. Sugarcane 1. In the initial stage, spray the liquid mixture around the root clump and plant base at 2 times the normal ratio. 2. After that, spray every 2 months at the normal rate. Cassava 1. In the initial stage, it is recommended that the liquid mixture be sprayed around the base of the plant 15 days after it has sprouted. After that, spray every 1 to 2 months. Rice 1. In the initial stage, spray the liquid mixture over the rice paddies every 20 days. 2. During the embryonic stage, increase the ratio by two times. 3. One liter of the concoction can be applied to about five to seven acres. Warning! Do not use water containing chlorine, as it will cause the living microorganisms to die. It is recommended that the product be used in conjunction with Dr. Plant fertilizer tablets. In times of extensive maggot and insect outbreaks, use Bio-1 
a mixture of smoked vinegar mixed with FT99. To protect crops against disease outbreaks, use Bio2, formerly known as silicon acid water. Spraying will get rid of all germs and increase yields with a 100% success rate. Or use it in combination with other Fuktian Group Company Limited products. For 100% protection, install an insect trapping mechanism as well. And anyone can produce organic fruits and vegetables for export throughout the world. Introduction to the organic products used in the degradation of plant stubble. Thailand is the world's number one rice exporter. But current yields have decreased in spite of the full-on chemical treatments. The reason production has dwindled is because after the harvest, most farmers set fire to the remaining stubble in their fields. The disadvantages of slash and burn farming are as follows. The burning of rice stubble and straw dramatically destroys and alters the structure of the soil, killing all the useful microorganisms in the ground. The burning heat causes a great deal of damage to the soil below. 1. It drastically changes the structure of the soil. The grains are packed tight and the ground is solid making it harder for plant roots to spread out. As a result, early stunting occurs as the roots are not able to feed the plant, so they become weak. When the plant is not healthy, disease can destroy crops more easily. 2. Loss of organic matter and nutrients in the soil. Once set ablaze, organic matter in the soil burns, releasing carbon dioxide into the air. The nutrients are transformed into a form that can hardly be contained in the soil. 3. Destruction of microorganisms. Insects and worms living in the soil die, thus lessening the amount of activity by microorganisms and decreasing their numbers underground. It meanwhile obstructs the process of converting nitrogen from the atmosphere into a form of nitrogen compounds which plants can use, plus the conversion of inorganic phosphorus into the form of soluble phosphate. As the degradation of organic matter adds nutrients to the soil, and if the larvae of the predator insects and parasites that live in the soil or crop stubble, and microbes which transmit plant diseases are burned away, there becomes an ecological imbalance in the soil which will facilitate the spread of diseases. 4. Water loss in the soil. Slash and burn farming raises the soil's temperature to as high as 90 degrees Celsius, causing the water to quickly evaporate, taking away all the moisture in the soil and leaving it dry and hard. 5. Producing dust, soot, ash, and various harmful gas pollutants. These are all detrimental to the environment and to the health particularly in the respiratory system. Due to the massive amount of waste arising from the practice, modern farmers have turned to plowing the remaining stubble instead of setting fire to harvested fields. Plowing the stubble refers to the process of unearthing the remaining rice stock base and roots left in the fields after harvest, and then returning it to the soil during the land preparation stage before planting, while the moisture content remains adequate. And the degradation process is allowed to carry out naturally for a period of time, for which the decomposing elements, as a source of organic matter, become plant nutrients. The crops can then be planted accordingly. The advantages of plowing crop stubble. Stubble consists of organic matter, that is readily available in rice paddies. Therefore, incorporating the decomposing stubble into the soil helps add useful organic matter. The benefits are as follows. 1. It helps improve the structure of the soil. The soil's porosity becomes incoherent and the roots of rice stalks can branch out with ease while ventilation in the soil increases. 
A sufficient amount of oxygen is then present for proper respiration among the roots, so crops then absorb water better. 2. It adds nutrients to the soil. A ton of stubble is equivalent to about 6 kilograms of nitrogen and 1.4 kilograms each of phosphorus and sulfur, 4 kilograms of calcium, 1 kilogram of magnesium, and 50 kilograms of silicon. 3. It adds useful microorganisms to the soil. The leftover stubble is a natural source of organic matter and serves as nourishment for microbes in the soil. As a result, it raises microbial growth activity associated with transforming nutrients in the soil into forms that are beneficial to crops. The organic matter derived from the reclamation of crop stubble resembles that of a sponge with tiny cavernous holes serving as the habitat of soil microbes and organisms. Increasing the amount of microorganisms in the soil reduces the amount of bacteria that cause plant diseases and soil erosion. Upon weighing out the advantages and disadvantages of slash and burn farming, Fuktian Group Company Limited produced a highly concentrated formula containing microorganisms specifically for microbial degradation of crop stubble, which accelerates the decomposition process, allowing the roughage to decay faster. The directions for formulating the organic mixture are as follows. 1. Pour 1 liter of the concentrated formula into a 200 liter tank and add 150 liters of water to the tank. Whisk it all together and then add another liter of the concentrate. Stir it up again and allow it to react for 15 to 20 minutes. For a 100-fold increase in microbial fermentation, leave it for 5 to 24 hours and for rapid bacteria growth, aerate the container for 4 to 6 hours and then apply it to the farming plot. The directions on how to use the organic fertilizer after fermentation are as follows. 1. Plow the remaining crop stubble into the ground and flood the field with water until the stubble is fully immersed. 2. Spray the prepared organic mixture over the entire paddy or pour it in as water floods the rice field. But spraying should be more effective as it is spread more evenly. 3. Allow 7 to 10 days for the plant matter to decompose. 4. Till the field and it is ready for cultivating rice. Treatment Rate 1 liter of the concentrated formula can be mixed with 200 liters of water, which will treat up to 4 acres. Warning Do not use water containing chlorine as it will cause the living microorganisms to die. To increase rice production and prevent infestation by aphids, brown plant hoppers, and golden apple snails, along with borers and rodents, till the soil with Dr. Plant silicon powder to enhance the quality of the rice plot and prevent any form of infestation. But the best thing, however, is that production increases by one to two fold. Products for Aquaculture While on the topic of resistance to disease, chemicals used to kill germs in the water eventually mix with the aquatic livestock, such as shrimp, which consume it as well. There is the fear that there would be residual effects on the consumers of the shrimp products from the unnatural accumulation of chemicals which may affect the environment in the long run. And on top of all that, issues related to international trade, especially if not accepted by foreign markets with some distributors using hazardous chemicals to preserve imported shrimp from Thailand. Due to the present situation, we have readily adopted natural treatments for use in the aquaculture industry, and they are seeing a growing acceptance 
among more and more farmers. One method of natural treatment is to use organic products that can improve the water in shrimp ponds. Main sources of organic compounds in shrimp hatchery water that lead to corrosion. 1. Organic material is naturally present in the water, combined with sediment and living and decaying organisms that were also already there prior to use by agriculturists. If taken directly from natural water sources, such sediment is certainly passed on to the shrimp ponds. Therefore, they should be a retention reservoir to help filter the sediment before actual use. 2. Decaying matter and soot at the bottom of the pond. When first starting off in shrimp farming or digging new wells, less sediment is present, but after the next generation and so on, the sediment collects and constantly builds up. To reduce the problem, it should be collected and kept separate in a pond. 3. Organic matter that comes from dead plankton and zooplankton in nutrient-rich water will rapidly multiply, which is known as a plankton boom. And when essential nutrients are depleted, the plankton gradually die down leading to the accumulation of organic matter at the bottom of the pond. 4. Decomposing matter from uneaten shrimp food will also collect at the bottom, adding to the organic compounds. This will feed the plankton at the bottom, resulting in a possible plankton boom. 5. The excretion of the organisms in aquaculture ponds, whether they be shrimp, fish, or oysters, are all organic, while constant accumulation takes place in all hatcheries. 6. The use of growth additives in large quantities also plays a part in the amount of waste accumulated at the bottom of ponds. To encourage farmers toward natural shrimp farming methods, Fuktian Group Company Limited manufactures organic products to support the productive microbes in shrimp ponds on farms. Dr. Shrimp 1 The Photosynthetic Microorganism Formula Photosynthetic microorganisms are bacteria that can still exist even in extremely low oxygen levels. Benefits of Photosynthetic Microorganisms 1. They produce microbes that are effective in the removal of hydrogen sulfide gas in the water and soot. 2. The microbes help decompose the organic components of remaining food scraps that are left uneaten, along with decomposing organic waste from the shrimp. 3. That helps reduce ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. 4. It is not toxic to other creatures. Achieving the most effective bacterial photosynthesis during the preparation of wells. After removing any soot and cleaning out the bottom of the pond, splash in the organic microbial photosynthesis formula at a ratio of 6 to 8 liters per rye all over the bottom to aid in the decomposition of any remaining organic matter and to increase the population of useful microorganisms. 1. During the rearing stage, regularly splash in the mixture during the peak hours for photosynthesis, which are 9 to 11 o'clock. Within the first two months, use 2 liters per rye once a week. In the following two months, use 1 liter per rye two times per week or up to 4 liters if conditions are still bad. For polluted water, if waste has accumulated to an uncontrollable level, use a volume of 4 liters per rye through all the rearing stages weekly. Recommended use The photosynthetic bacteria should be mixed with zeolite, or 100% pure processed seashells, and churned in the water so it sinks to the bottom, allowing microbial photosynthesis to occur faster as they are very productive at the bottom.
However, they are unable to propagate on their own due to a lack of food along with essential nutrients and thus cannot regenerate independently. Therefore, the concentrated formula must be repurchased every time when needed. Dr. Shrimp 2 The treatment method for spoiled water in shrimp ponds. The treatment consists of the following microorganisms. 1. Bacteria that produce the enzyme protease, which digests protein. 2. Bacteria that produces the lipase enzyme, which breaks down fat. 3. Bacteria that produce the enzyme amylase, which digests carbohydrates. 4. Bacteria that produce lactic acid, which inhibit the growth of disease-transmitting microorganisms that are able to survive either with or without oxygen. The benefits from this group of microorganisms 1. They help decompose organic matter such as proteins, carbohydrates, fat, and ammonia residues which build up in shrimp ponds. 2. They help reduce the rate of bacterial infection over an extended period in shrimp, which is caused by changes in the water's pH balance. 3. They can reduce the spread of the bacteria known to cause fluorescence. 4. They help keep the pH level from getting too high in the rearing process. 5. They are not toxic to other living creatures. The procedure for preparing the organic water soluble mixture is as follows. 1. First, pour 500 milliliters of the concentrated organic solution into a 200 liter tank and fill it with 150 liters of water. Then shake the Dr. Shrimp 2 solution and add another 500 milliliters along with more water to complete the 200 liters and stir. Aerate the container for 8 to 12 hours overnight or longer to increase the volume of microorganisms before applying. 2. Splash the formula over the pond according to the designated ratio. 3. It may even be siphoned into the tank with the help of a stainless steel or plastic bucket to maintain a slow, constant flow down pipes directly into the shrimp ponds. Achieving the most effective outcome 1. The pond preparation stage Apply a proper mixture of 25 to 30 liters per rye per week. 2. The rearing stage. In the first three months, use up to 25 liters per rye every three to four hours. After four months, use up to half a liter per rye every two weeks. 3. It is optimal to gradually release the water-soluble mixture into a full tank every day through a 24-hour drip system. Recommendations for use 1. Water still containing chlorine should be left out overnight before being used to prepare the organic mixture. 2. If chemicals are being used to first treat the water, refrain from adding the concentrated microorganism products and double the ratio after the first use. 3. The proportions can be adjusted to better suit the conditions and water quality. Recommended quality products 1. Lime salt plus potassium Benefits It improves the soil and water salinity conditions that are ideal for shrimp farming. It enhances the array of minerals that are essential for the growth of the shrimp. It also accelerates the growth of the shrimp. 2. Mortar shells plus magnesium silicate. Benefits. The shrimp can immediately absorb calcium to help quickly develop the outer shell. The shrimp can immediately absorb magnesium silicate to spur growth. 3. Magnesium plus silicon plus gold. Benefits It helps keep the shrimp from being stressed. It accelerates development of the outer shells. 
It helps control the pH of the water. It helps enhance the growth rate. 4. Zeolite Charcoal Potassium Benefits It helps neutralize toxins such as mercury, cadmium, and lead. It helps neutralize lingering compounds that are toxic to shrimp. It helps enhance the rate of growth. It helps strengthen the shrimp after molting. 5. Super Minerals Benefits They help neutralize toxins such as mercury, cadmium, and lead. They help neutralize solids that are toxic to shrimp. They help enhance the rate of growth. 6. JF325 Benefits It properly adjusts the alkalinity in the water. 7. Hylitrate Line Benefits It helps keep the shrimp clean. It helps increase the pH and alkalinity. It helps the shrimp to molt simultaneously. It helps reduce the excessive amount of plankton. It spurs rapid development of the exoskeleton. 8. Lime Gold Benefits It quickly helps add oxygen to the water. It quickly helps clear the water. It helps in quick development of the hard outer shell after the molting process. The Livestock Products Group In Thailand, there are a great number of farm animals scattered throughout the provinces. They may be raised in standardized farms or simply in a small agricultural household. The main problem found in livestock farms are the foul odors stemming from spoiled water. Causes of the smell from farm animals The smell from livestock comes from gases including hydrogen sulfide gas, ammonia, methane, carbonyl compounds, amine compounds, alcohol, and mercaptans. These toxins occur naturally in farm animals due to the decomposition of animal waste and spoiled water. From the degradation of protein, as with food particles, which are composed of carbohydrates and proteins, comes ammonia, NH3, and amine compounds. The degradation of carbohydrates, meanwhile, produces anaerobic carbonyl compounds, alcohols, mercaptans, methane, and hydrogen sulfide. All this is caused by the digestive systems of livestock, not performing as well as they should. Wastewater from Animal Farms Wastewater coming from animal farms can be divided into two categories. 1. Solid Most solid waste consists of animal manure and food scraps. 2. Liquid the liquid type mainly results from water used to clean stable floors and the animals themselves, forming a mix of urine, water, and cleaning products. Due to the problems stated above, Fuktian Group Company Limited had its technicians screen and select resistant microorganisms that would be effective in helping to solve the problem. They are available in the company's following products. Dr. Animal 1 The formula for controlling the foul odor of farm animals, whether on land or water, consists of the following microorganisms. 1. Bacteria that produce the enzyme protease for the digestion of protein. 2. Bacteria that produces the lipase enzyme to break down fat. 3. Bacteria that produce the enzyme amylase for the digestion of carbohydrates. 4. Bacteria that produce lactic acid to inhibit the growth of disease-transmitting microorganisms which can survive with or without oxygen. 5. Yeast to produce alcohol and organic acids that inhibit the growth of microorganisms that cause spoilage and odor. If used on the farm, the benefits are as follows. 1. 
It helps get rid of the smell on livestock farms. 2. It helps treat the water consumed by livestock. 3. It helps control the amount of disease transmitting microbes in farm animals. 4. It is safe to the livestock and user. The directions for formulating the organic mixture is as follows. 1. Pour 200 milliliters of the concentrated organic solution into a 200 liter tank and add 150 liters of water and stir the Dr. Animal Concentrate in with the water. Then, add 200 milliliters more along with more water to complete 200 liters. Stir the contents around again and leave it for 6 to 18 hours to produce 100 times more bacteria. For accelerated bacteria growth, aerate the container for 4 to 6 hours, then apply. Directions on how to apply the organic solution after fermentation are as follows. 1. Spray it all over the barn and livestock 2 to 3 times a week in the initial stage, and then apply just once a week. 2. Heavily spray areas usually exposed to animal waste every three to four days to the point where the areas are soaked. 3. Spray or splash it into wastewater ponds at a ratio of 1,000 liters of solution per every 8,000 to 10,000 liters of water, two to three times every week for the first month, and then apply every three to four months at a ratio of 500 liters for every 8,000 to 10,000 liters of wastewater. 1. Do not use water containing chlorine, as it will cause the living microorganisms to die. Dr. Animal 2 – The Formula for Treating Livestock Digestive Systems it includes microorganisms that have the ability to inhibit the growth of pathogens while strengthening the immune system, enhancing the ability to digest and absorb nutrients. If used on the farm, the benefits are as follows. 1. It helps improve the livestock's digestive systems. 2. It strengthens their immune systems. Three. It has compounds that help reduce the amount of microbes that cause disease in livestock. 4. It is safe and harmless to the user and livestock. The directions on how to use the organic solution after fermentation are as follows. 1. Spray the Dr. Animal organic solution all over the animal feed at a proportion of 500 cc's of solution per 500 kilograms of feed. Mix it thoroughly before letting the livestock feed. Products pertaining to wastewater treatment plants and homes. Currently, wastewater areas in the country are on the rise as a result of the growing population. There comes along with it a growing need for more water for consumption, but inevitably, it is followed by more wastewater. And if this wastewater is not properly treated before being released into natural waterways, it will cause the water in canals and rivers to become polluted, decreasing the volume of water available for household consumption. The two main sources of wastewater are domestic household sewage and industrial waste. Wastewater from homes results from the daily activities of the members of the household, which include wastewater from cooking and other household waste. That consists of up to 80% of the amount of water used and accounts for 75% of all wastewater. The composition of wastewater produced by households is made up of the following elements. One, organic compounds, including carbohydrates, protein, and fats, from rice, noodles, soup, vegetables, and meat scraps, for instance. 2. Inorganic minerals including chloride and phosphate, which are produced in the washing process. 3. 
detergents that produce foam activated by the washing process. 4. Oil and various lingering solid matter. 5. Bad odor caused by the anaerobic decomposition of organic matter. Wastewater from industrial plants. The composition of industrial wastewater includes extremely hot water used in production, as well as cool wastewater with the great amount of workers in factories from staff restrooms. This water makes up 25% of all wastewater. Despite the rather small volume, its impurities include chemicals such as toxic heavy metals plus various organic compounds, including those that are highly concentrated. The water coming out of factories contain the following elements. 1. Organic waste, such as starch, carbohydrates, proteins, fat, meat scraps, and water used to clean meat to begin with. That also depends on the cleaning agents used in the washing process and the type of product manufacturing. 2. Various inorganic minerals, such as sodium chloride, are also found, which often come from the chemicals added to food products, not to mention antiseptics used on the production line and to clean restrooms. 3. Foam cleaning agents or detergents. 4. Oil and various lingering solid matter. 5. Bad odor caused by the anaerobic decomposition of organic matter. Due to the problems mentioned above, Fuktian Group Company Limited had its technicians screen and select naturally resistant microorganisms that would be effective in helping to solve the problem. They are available in the company's following products. Dr. Clean One. The organic formula eliminates odors from water pollution coming out of industrial plants. It consists of the following microorganisms. 1. Bacteria that produce the enzyme protease for the digestion of protein. 2. Bacteria that produce the lipase enzyme to break down fat. 3. Bacteria that produce the enzyme amylase for the digestion of carbohydrates. 4. Bacteria that produce lactic acid to help inhibit the growth of disease-transmitting microbes that can survive with or without oxygen. 5. Yeast to produce alcohol and organic acids to help inhibit the growth of microorganisms that cause spoilage and odor. If used in the factory, the benefits are as follows. 1. It gets rid of the foul odors from restrooms, toilet water, and water treatment plants. 2. It helps reduce the amount of pathogenic microorganisms. 3. It helps reduce costs in running the aerator in water treatment facilities. 4. It helps reduce the duration needed for treatment and requires less space to treat wastewater. 5. It is safe to the user and the environment. The directions for formulating the organic mixture are as follows. 1. Pour 200 cc of the organic concentrate into a 200 liter tank filled with 150 milliliters of water. Then shake the Dr. Clean solution and add another 200 cc plus more water to complete 200 liters. Stir it well and leave it for 6 to 18 hours to produce 100 times more bacteria. For rapid bacterial growth, aerate the container for 4 to 6 hours before applying. The directions on how to apply the organic solution after fermentation are as follows. 1. Pour the organic solution into the water treatment facilities of the factory. Whether in wastewater treatment ponds or aerated lagoons, treatment with activated sludge, treatment with a sequencing batch reactor, or treatment by rotating biological contractor. Use the Dr. Clean One organic concentrate at a ratio of 1,000 liters 
for 10,000 liters of wastewater in the initial stage. 2. After the wastewater treatment system is working effectively, use just 1,000 liters of Dr. Clean 1 per every 100,000 to 300,000 liters of wastewater. 3. The ratio may be adjusted according to the recommendations of the wastewater treatment plant administrators. Dr. Clean 2. The formula for eliminating odors from wastewater produced by households consists of the following microorganisms. 1. Bacteria that produce the enzyme protease for the digestion of protein. 2. Bacteria that produce the lipase enzyme to break down fat. 3. Bacteria that produce the enzyme amylase for the digestion of carbohydrates. 4. Bacteria that produce lactic acid to help inhibit the growth of disease-transmitting microbes that can survive with or without oxygen. 5. Yeast to produce alcohol and organic acids to help inhibit the growth of microorganisms that cause spoilage and odor. If used in the home, the benefits are as follows. 1. It gets rid of the foul odors from bathrooms and septic tanks. 2. It helps treat wastewater from daily activities. 3. It helps reduce the amount of pathogenic microorganisms. 4. It helps reduce costs in pumping the water to the septic tank. 5. It is safe to the user and environment. The directions on how to use the organic solution are as follows. 1. For the first time, Pour the organic solution directly on areas emitting odors, such as in the toilet, bathroom floor, and sink for washing dishes. Use about 50 to 100 cc's. It is better if applied to dried surfaces that have not had contact with water for 3 to 6 hours and left overnight. Then rinse off in the morning and repeat every 2 to 3 days in the first week. Two. In the second stage, and for subsequent use, mix 50 cc's of the organic formula with 5 liters of water and apply it 1 to 2 times per week, so the microorganisms will always be present in the system. 3. Add 1 liter of the concentrated solution to 5 liters of water and stir it together, then slowly pour it into a 1,000 liter septic tank. For a higher concentration of organisms, leave it for up to 6 to 18 hours before use. 4. If the smell is still uncontrollable, increase the amount by 2 to 3 times. 5. In multi-story houses, first apply it on every floor, and then just on the top floor after that. with focus on high quality to benefit farmers. Dr. Plant increases the amount of productive microorganisms in the soil and adds nutrients that are beneficial to plants, enhancing soil conditions to the richness of a virgin forest. Microbial degradation of crop stubble to be used in getting rid of crop stubble organically adding nutrients to the soil, which helps reduce global warming. Dr. Shrimp 1 and Dr. Shrimp 2 reduce production costs and produce healthy shrimp. Dr. Animal 1 and Dr. Animal 2 reduce odors and are good for the digestive systems of livestock, resulting in higher meat production. Dr. Clean 1 and Dr. Clean 2 reduce water pollution, and do not leave harmful residues.